Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. Welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. Here we celebrate faiths of many traditions, and today we're having a combined one. It's going to be celebration of the winter solstice, where I'm wearing the sun, and Hanukkah, so I'm wearing the Star of David. Here you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, and your expansive heart. At All Faiths, we have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. No matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and whomever you love, you are truly welcome here. Is anyone visiting for the first or second time? If please, so, please raise your hand. We're glad to have you with us. Great. If you'd like to know more about All Faith, please see Fran Way after our service at our welcoming corner. And now we have a few announcements. There's no child and youth program in December. Our uh, director is on a journey to Africa, including Egypt, and our children are invited to be with us today, and particularly because the mother of two of our children is giving the sermon today. <laughs> so we weren't gonna hide them in the back room. They gotta hear mama. In December, we are collecting for employee bonuses. If you haven't already given, you can write out a check to All Face and write bonuses in the lower left corner. On Monday tomorrow, we're going to have a new roof put on the building. So uh, <laughs> we had damages from Hurricane Ian, and we had some damages uh, to the roof, and we were fortunate to have People who got a roofer is going to come in and, and it's going to be covered by insurance. So that's something to celebrate. And our book club will be meeting on Monday at noon. Wednesday at 1, 1 p.m. is the board meeting. Our office will be closed on Thursday and Friday. Regina is working Saturday and Sunday on the holidays. There's no, no rest for dedicated people like <laughs> Regina. And um, so there will be a choir rehearsal on Thursday at two. That's kind of the final wrap up so that you can do all the singing for us for our Christmas celebrations. <laughs> and on Saturday at 6.30 p.m., we invite you all to come for our Christmas Eve candlelight service. And for that night, we're very happy that Darlene Mitchell is going to be our soloist. She has been with us from the beginning and, and she's just the right person to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Then on Sunday, we'll have our Christmas Day service here at, at 10.30. And Doug and Diane Cartwright could not be with us, but they prepared the script. We're going to be doing Christmas around the world. And Carlos and the choir will be leading us in lots and lots of singing that day because we need all the joy we can get this year. So now I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we sing together, enter, rejoice, and come in. couple of things. Uh, Joyce had asked me to explain what the Florida Junior Master Naturalist program is since we brought a cake. I know I explained in the Facebook group, so if you're sick of hearing it, I'm sorry. But Nova just graduated a 12-week class that is put on by the University of Florida, the Florida Wildlife Commission, and the state. And she became a certified Junior Master Naturalist, Florida Master Naturalist. It was a... <laughs> It was a 12-week program in which each module, like the upland system and the coastal system, had a group presentation 
and a multi-hour hike that included a wet walk where they were up to their waist in water. So we were just really proud of her and wanted to celebrate with all of you guys that she graduated this week. And the other thing is Linda Bigelow has donated some Christmas cards and she donated some uh, art supplies to Nova. And we have made a card to all fates because there's so many different ways in s that we say happy holidays and so many different ways that we're celebrating. We would like you to go and there's some markers back there add your way of blessing all fakes just like you were writing a christmas card to a friend and we'll leave it up until next week and then we'll digitally document it it's wonderful that we live in a world where we don't have to hold on to paper things anymore <laughs> oh and to rejoice and come in <laughs> Now, our President Marge de Galbo will lead us in the lighting of the menorah in honor of Hanukkah. She will recite the words in Hebrew, and then we will join in reciting the words of English that are printed in your order of service. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kiddishanu V'mitzvasav V'tzivanu Lahad Lik Ner Shel Hanukkah. Praise be thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Now I need the kids. Where are our kids? Emmy? Nova. Very dangerous. Okay. We need to put the wicks up. Pull the wicks up. Do you get to go to church to play with fire?
At this time, we invite you to come forward to express joys and sorrows, and we're adding gratitude. Uh, at this time, we have so many sorrows and, and things happening in our lives, but it's good to express gratitude, too. So I invite you to come forward and, and briefly share with us. Annalee. Good morning. I'm lighting a candle of gratitude to the congregation. Today was the final day of Operation Joy's uh, holiday cheer collection. And you guys have been so generous and so wonderful. And I'm so grateful. <coughs> every pound of coffee you bought and brought here, every dollar that you donated, every pound of rice, you make a connection between yourself and the person receiving it. And that to quote another great TV personality, Martha Stewart, it's a good thing, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, Annalie. It's so good to be active and sharing with the community. Good morning, I'm Tina Noel, and I have a joy. I won the drawing for Snowbird Follies, the presentation is tonight at seven o'clock at our sister congregation, UUCFM. I am not going to be able to attend, so I am gifting it to someone here. Thank you, Tina. Anyone else? I'm going to light a candle for Sharon Gray. Sharon had surgery this week on the 15th and she is recovering. She hopes to be back with us on Christmas Day. So this is for Sharon Gray. And I'm lighting a candle for Janet and Gerald Cohen. Uh, they've both been hospitalized. She had low sodium, was weak, was in the hospital. She's in rehab and then she got the terrible news that Gerald had pneumonia and he was on a ventilator. So Keep them in your, your healing thoughts and prayers. And I'm lighting this candle in appreciation for our wonderful employees who do so much to keep everything joyful here at All Face. Uh, we are truly blessed to have wonderful people with us, and I hope you show your appreciation with the bonuses. Kathleen. Good morning, everyone. I couldn't let this just end without more gratitudes. I thought we had so much to be grateful for. I had a conversation this week with a good friend of mine who's 95 years old and having difficulty with aging problems. And she said, you know, I'm grateful I had a pillow on my bed last night. And it really touched me. And I sat down and started listing things that I had to be grateful for in this moment. I had a pillow on my bed. I have a bed. Mm -hmm. I have clean sheets. I have a warm blanket. You know, all of those things. I look at the so many people who that's not what they have this morning when they woke up. So I think this, this whole gratitude thing, we could go on here for another hour or two at least <laughs> of, of things that we have to be grateful for. And I'm debating whether I should share this last one, but this morning I woke up to a dream where I... <laughs> There was a handsome young man who tapped me and said, it's time to get up. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I woke up and there was no one there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, Kathleen, for sharing that with us. Uh, That's it. Um, I would like to light a candle for Frank Geltner, who also had surgery on his eye this week, and um, please keep him and his uh, partner, Nicole Racine, in your thoughts and prayers. And this is for Frank. Uh, he had one eye that was blind, and he had more trouble with that, so that eye has been removed, but uh, he still has vision in the other eye. So, and I'm lighting this candle for all of you who have joys, and sorrows and gratitude in your hearts. And may you go forth in this 
season and spread your joy with others. Now I'd like to ask you to close your eyes, take a deep breath. Let us turn our minds and our hearts to today's service and contemplate our many blessings. Now I invite you to rise in body and spirit as we sing together my favorite hymn. Pay attention to the words. This song says it all, spirit of life. <laughs> Today we're celebrating Hanukkah, so it's appropriate that we have a few words from Ecclesiastes, uh, which are attributed to King Solomon. A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun still rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. Go eat your bread with enjoyment or your cake today and drink your wine or your coffee with a merry heart. For God has long ago approved what you do. Light is sweet and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. Even those who live many years should rejoice in them all. So all rejoice as Carlos sings, we are the light of the world. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. Blessed are they who are me and humble, theirs will inherit the earth. Bless us, O Lord, make us meek and humble. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may see the good that we do and give glory. Blessed are they who will mourn in sorrow, they will be comforted. 
bless us, O Lord, when we share their sorrow. Bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world. We are light shining. us who hunger for thirst and justice they will be satisfied bless us O oh lord hear our cry for justice bless us O oh lord our god we are the light of the world may our light shine before all that they may see Thank you, Carlos. We are the light of the world. So let us celebrate the winter solstice by hearing the prayer of Ignaton to the sun god, Aten. Ignaton is regarded as the first monotheist Unitarian, and his wife Nefertiti was high priestess to Aten. And Moses, is an Egyptian name, and recent research even speculates that roses could have been Ignaton, or more likely a high priest to Aten, because he was raised in Pharaoh's household at the same time that Ignaton ruled. And he fled Egypt at the time of the Civil War that drove out those who worshiped one God. Moses and the Israelites preserved and promised and promoted the monotheist religion. So this is the prayer of Ignaton. O soul God, like whom there is no other, thou didst create the world according to thou de thy desires, whilst thou wert alone all men, cattle, and wild beasts, whatever is on earth, going upon its feet, and what is on high, flying with its wings, the countries of Syria, Nubia, the land of Egypt, thou settest every man in his place. Thou suppliest their necessities. Everyone has his food, and his time of life is reckoned. Their tongues are separate in speech, and their natures as well. Their skins are distinguished, as thou distinguishest the foreign peoples. Thou makest a Nile in the underworld. Thou bringest forth as thou desirest to maintain the people, according as thou madest them for thyself the Lord of all of them, that's the universalist, wearying himself with them, the Lord of every land, rising for them, the Aten of the day, great of majesty. And now, please rise in body and spirit as we sing together, the morning hangs the single. The words are printed in your order of service.
Good morning. My kids are absolutely stunned that you asked me to speak because they sure are sick of my voice. <laughs> it's no secret I'm not a fan of public speaking. Unlike my sparkling oldest daughter, I'm not able to be so poised and make it look so effortless, although we put thousands of dollars into that training. <laughs> <laughs> I much prefer the written word, which gives me a chance to mess up because my medical condition gives me something called aphasia, where I lose words sometimes. So I'm not exactly in my comfort zone but thank goodness I've got a word-for-word -word cheat sheet today. Okay, so normally I would give you the standard Yule service. I'd go on about how our early ancestors celebrated when the sun was reborn in the sky. I'd give you some fluffy bunny history, and that would be that. Well, as much as I do love fluffy bunnies, I'm not going to rehash that this year. According to Pew Research, UUs have the highest percentage of university degrees when compared with all other major religious uh, paths. So you could probably tell me the story. There's a less talked about part regarding our early ancestors and why they celebrated Yule. Collective survival. The very reason for celebrating the return of the light is that those present had made it through another turn of the wheel together. In times of pestilence and famine, war and disasters, they could look around and say, here we are, still. The sharing of the bounty meant that there was a bounty to share. And in those times, that was definitely something to celebrate. We ourselves have seen a year that feels like Pandora had just opened her box and released every curse on us. It's actually Pandora's jar, but I'm not going to get in the weeds with the Greek mythology right now. <laughs> We've been through a worldwide pestilence, and the hits seem to keep coming, right up to having a hundred-year storm that made many of our beloveds homeless. We just hit an absolutely sickening milestone, 10 years since the Sandy Hook slaughter and not a single new gun sense law in place at the federal level. The economy's tanking, middle-aged parents with children are taking the hit with inflation and an economy that isn't working in their favor. It seems like an in inescapable health gate at times, but there is a way out. And it's through, but there's a catch. We have to go together or we won't get there at all. You've probably heard of the doomsday clock, which measures the likelihood of a man-made global catastrophe. At its inception in 1947, we were seven minutes until midnight. We've come much closer, of course, and in 2020, we became the closest to midnight we've ever been. Siblings, we are now 100 seconds until midnight. And that's where we've stayed since 2020. We're not gonna make it until dawn if we don't realize really quick like that everything, all of justice, must be intersectional. We can't have a true discussion about climate reality if we aren't also talking about racial justice and housing. Ian was proof of that. Long after the lights had come up nearly everywhere else in the county, after the debris had been moved, a tiny Spanish-speaking area of Iona was still left without. No pot power, no water, they're molding homes. The governor, the former vice president and all other forms of performative glitter had come to Sanibel in Fort Myers Beach while these folks suffered almost as if they were invisible. No cavalry were coming for them and they knew it. We're not going to make it until dawn if we don't realize that a conversation about mental health, which is a conversation that is well overdue, has to examine the societal bigotry that contributes to the nearly 50% of trans children attempting suicide before they're 18. When we say that black lives matter, we have to mean that the black lives of black trans women have to matter. At least 35 wholly beloved trans souls lost their lives to violence in 2022 so far. Most of them women of color. We cannot get to liberation when these women cannot walk down the street in broad daylight without fear of being murdered. If we're going to make it until dawn, we have to realize that the conversation about women's liberation 
must address this mess of a for-profit health care system, a system that makes having a baby cost the same as a new car, an economy that leaves the majority of single women uninsured, and the cost of child care astronomical. Then we must get to the correlation about poverty to child literacy rates. And when we get there, the arc of justice demands attention to the school to prison pipeline. And in Florida, the restored rights of felons who have finished their sentences to be reinstated as voters, but again have had that stolen by our governor. We have to recognize that justice work can't be totally effective unless we are bringing our disabled siblings along. Even here in this loving and inclusive community, we have to look around and we have to ask ourselves, have we made an environment, a physical and the mental emotionally environment, which we have done our best to root out ableism? Ableism is the ism that even those who embrace liberal theology seem to have a hard time talking about. Uh, we can't make it comfortable for everyone, we say, without even stopping to ask, what can we do? We have denied ourselves liberation without even reaching for it. And I can tell you across the board of our religion, you use as a whole, our wheelchair and scooter using siblings sure do get tired of looking at butts during the songs. In UU, we often study liberation theology, and Reverend CJ was so good at explaining this. It means that my freedom is all wrapped up in yours, and that there's no welcome table without a seat for everyone. Quite frankly, at 100 seconds until midnight, we're running out of time to even build that welcome table. If we're going to make it until dawn, we have nine minutes and 29 seconds to get the knee off the neck of unarmed black men because you can't get to liberation when you're crushed under the weight of a racist policing system. If we're going to make it, we have almost no time at all to stop the melting glaciers, glaciers and sea level rise. And the only way to get to climate liberation is if we make major changes now. These changes are going to be uncomfortable at first to privileged societies like those of us in the U.S. There's still a bounty on this planet to feed and clothe every person. But providing that, that means we need to take only our fair share. There's a problematic comedian, Lou C.K., who has a line that I love, proving that even a broken clock is right now and again. The only time you should look in your neighbor's bowl is to make sure that they have enough. You don't look in your neighbor's bowl to see if you have as much as them. Siblings, it is time to look in our neighbor's bowl. It's time to look in the bowl of the family of the real life nativity with their child wrapped up against the weather, sleeping on the streets of L.A. in winter. It's time to look at the bowl of the rural Chinese family that we've exploited for the purpose of cheap goods. Not me, you say? That wasn't us? Okay, so no one's ever put it in writing, but our houses are full of cheaply made Chinese goods that we know was built with exploitation. All the while, we're having to pass 100 black and indigenous creators on the way to the big box store, taking sustenance out of their mouths. There's enough abundance to fill every belly when our resources are laid out for collective survival. But we're gonna have to move over and make some room. Because let's be qu clear, billionaires and starving children should not exist in the same society. I have got some news for you. It may be hard to hear, but you're never gonna be a millionaire. I mean, a billionaire, excuse me. You're never going to be a billionaire. I really wanted to ride as much to, to space as much as the next person, but no matter how hard you work or how much time with your loved ones you sacrifice, you're not going to make it to the Forbes list anytime soon. It's time we put away the myth of Horatio Alger is not only false, but immoral. You will always be closer to the socioeconomic class, to the homeless man standing at the intersection with a sign than you are to Elon Musk. There's good news there, though. That places you much closer to the divine, for the divine is always on the side of the oppressed. We can't be close to the divine when we complain that a micro portion of a cent of our dollar might accidentally drop food in the mouth of a drug addict by way of food stamps. We're farthest from God when we hoard our resources and build wealth on the backs of the oppressed. At 100 seconds to midnight, we can't wait for our collective liberation. Every second that ticks by in this long night, when we've been hit by the forces of Pandora's jar, we have to act cohesively to survive. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., words rarely quoted as we whitewash and make so gentle his legacy, 
This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Imagine that. He wasn't always talking about the glow of soft light or silent protest. He was demanding liberation, full and complete liberation now. Now I'm going to say something that's going to ruffle a few feathers because we're you use and we believe big in it. You cannot get to liberation from the voting beat. Voting is necessary and the collective breaking of our chains means that we have to ensure access to the ballot as widely and fairly as possible. Still, we have to admit that where our government and justice intersect is often at the cleanup crew stage. Something terrible has already happened, likely multiple times before we get to the point to legislate freedom. The way we make it until morning together is through direct action. Prayers and wishes are not enough in any religious path. Pope Francis, or if you were Jesu Jesuits educated, Papa Frankie, had this to say. You pray for the hungry, and then you feed them. That's how prayer works. The divine is in direct action. We praise John Lewis for saying, get in the way. But then we stay home, mail in our ballots, and pat ourselves on the back, thinking that we fulfilled that ask. We forget that what the way that John, uh, what that John Lewis got in the way of was a police baton in Selma that our UU ancestors spilled blood on Pettus Bridge to get in the way. Get in the way didn't just mean as much as your oppressors allow you to. It means take your body of privilege and directly place it in the way. The word comrade isn't one that comes to most of our lips in use of justice work because of its immediate association with communism. I find myself using it more often after a liberation worker in New York commonly used it to describe fellow justice workers. He explained that the closest translation of the word to English would be cellmate. It means that you are locked in the same struggle that I am. And it will have far worse associations to those who um, had experienced the way it was used by dictators in the past. But I found it interesting to think of our fellow justice workers as cellmates. It really brings home how it is all the same struggle and how our liberation is bound together. Perhaps this is as close as you'll hear to a fire and brimstone sermon in a UU pulpit, but my intention is not to dampen your holiday spirit. We still have 100 seconds to act, 100 precious seconds to make the changes we need that will ensure our survival until dawn. We just talked about direct action. There's so many liberation workers in this very room right now working their corners involved in direct action. We have a fierce and persistent group of climate warriors here and those who speak truth to power about race, even when it's uncomfortable. We have folks who are selling their handmade, handmade art to fill hungry tummies. We have people who have not only bought a meal for, but sat down to share a meal with the homeless, and that's holy work. There are many places, needed places, that will feed people. They'll give them something to eat, but sometimes a soul needs company for sustenance too. Can we think about that when we feed people in the future? Can we not just give a person food but share a meal? Ask anyone who comes from a Mediterranean culture and they'll tell you that sharing a meal is a love language all its own. We have remarkable children here and I don't just say that because two of them are my own. They show up in diverse ways and every one of them are already performing liberation work in our community. I've marched with every child at Fifth Ainsley and tell her we gotta fix that soon. <laughs> Better than any of us, these young people see the need for intersectional justice. When we're unsure, perhaps we should be looking to them to lead us to liberation because their vision is clear and unjaded and not complicated with all those disappointments. They have a better view of what a free tomorrow looks like. In my own journey, my days as a religious educator working with teenagers were some of the most valuable experiences of my life. Just as I was coming to the age where my worldview was beginning to become very rigid, their fresh takes and their radical openness kept my mind and spirit pliable. We have every right to be proud of what this congregation contributes to the community. Our radical welcoming is not only felt by the people who come in our doors, but it spills into the streets as bright as the yellow t-shirts we wear. We wear those shirts not only as a form of witness, but so we can always find one another and plug their on sale. The order forms are right back there on the board. 
but we can always find each other in that bright yellow, and it's not just a formal witness. For our survival, our justice work has to be the same. It must be a beacon that allows us to find one another so that we may always be moving toward one another into a cohesive, inclusive, diverse, chain-breaking unit. This is the holy work of survival. So may we go toward dawn, remembering even now that in these difficult times, that with all the horror that left Pandora's jar, hope remained. Hope was the last thing in the jar, and it stayed. I leave you with a quote by labor leader and liberation worker Eugene V. Debs. Years ago, I recognized my kinship with all living things, and I made up my mind that I was not one bit better than the meanest on earth. When there is a lower class, I am in it. While there is a criminal element, I am of it. Where there is a soul in prison, I am not free. My proud heretic si sibling, it is 100 seconds till midnight and the longest night ahead to get through. All of us are going to need all of us if we're going to survive. I've got a, I've got a joke, joke. So I've got a couple of jokes for you <laughs> because I hear that laughter makes us more generous. So the first one, a Baptist goes to a UU church for the first time, makes a friend right in the door. And they sat down together, watched the service, and after the service, uh, the UU says, so how did you like it? How did you like your first experience with the UU? And the Baptist said, well, I really don't like that you deny the divinity of Jesus. And the long time you, you said, oh, no, you must have misunderstood. We don't deny the divinity of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last one. A traveler couldn't find the local Unitarian Universalist church. After looking in the center of town in the suburbs and out in the surrounding countryside, the traveler asked a farmer, Am I too far out for the UU church? And the farmer's reply was, nobody's too far out for them. other eyes beholding are kindled from that flame and dawn becomes the morning when prophets love proclaim and certainly your sermon today exemplified that I, I was deeply moved and deeply touched at this time where we we talk about joy we must also remember the importance of service so now our morning offering will be taken as Carlos sings, we shall be free. This ain't coming from no prophet, just an ordinary man. When I close my eyes, I see the way this world shall be. When we all walk hand in hand When the last child cries For a crust of bread When the last man dies For just words that he said When the shelter over the poorest head we shall be free when the last we notice is the color of skin 
When the first thing we look for is the beauty within. When the skies and the oceans are clean again, then we shall be free. We shall be free. We shall be free. Stand straight, walk proud, then we shall be free. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. It seems so appropriate that today when we're celebrating Nova the Naturalist, that our closing words are the canticle of Brother Sun and Sister Moon of St. Francis of Assisi, who uh, presides over us in the memorial garden. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Sun, who is the day through whom you give us light. And he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor of you, Most High. He bears the likeness. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars, in the heavens, you have made them bright, precious, and fair. Praise be you, my Lord, through brothers' wind and air, in fair and stormy all weathers moods, by which you cherish all that you have made. Praise be you, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, humble, precious, and pure. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night. And he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, producing varied fruits with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who grant pardon for love of you and bear sickness and trial. And blessed are those who endure in peace. By you, Most High, they will be crowned. And now, Carlos will bless us with someday at Christmas with a vision of a beautiful future. So 
Someday at Christmas, men won't be boys Playing with bombs like kids play with toys One warm December, our hearts will see A world where all are free Someday at Christmas, there'll be no wars when we have found what Christmas is for, when we have found that life's really worth a world where peace on earth. Someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where we all are free. May we not be time for you and me, but some. Christmas time. Someday at Christmas we'll see a land with no hungry children, no empty hand. One happy morning people will share a world where people care. Someday at Christmas there'll be no tears with people equal and no one has fears one shining moment one prayer away a world with world today someday all our dreams will come to be someday in a world where all are free maybe not in time for you and me but someday at Christmas Christmas, we will not fail. Hate will be gone and love will prevail. Someday a new world where we can start with hope in every heart. Someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where people are free. Maybe not in time for you. But someday at Christmas time, someday at Christmas time. Someday, and may we make it to dawn. I want to apologize to Regina. Uh, she asked me to make an announcement, and I omitted it. Um, the, some people are having trouble reading the little print on the order of service for the hymns. So she's starting to print up four or five extra orders of service each week. If you ask the greeters for them, they'll be in larger print and that'll be particularly beneficial for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services where we're going to be doing a lot of singing and a lot of words will be there. So uh, we appreciate Regina's thoughtfulness on that. If you don't read this little print, you can get some larger print copies. So thank you, Regina. And we appreciate very much uh, Rachel Spiller for her prophetic message about all the things we have to do. We cannot ignore all of these issues because we do want to make it to dawn and we someday we want to have that beautiful Christmas. And we thank Marge DeGalvo and the children for lighting the candles for Hanukkah. We're grateful to Carlos for his beautiful music and Regina on the camera and Ed Alred on sound, Joe Gaten, our sexton, Joyce Schaefer for bringing flowers, and Linda Biglow for hospitality and our greeters. And uh, today, it's, uh, we're having a double celebration. We're having both ice cream, which has been brought by Greg Monk and Cameron Ann Hall, and we're having a cake for Nova it's brought by Rachel and her family to celebrate her becoming a naturalist. So after service, there's lots of good stuff back there. I always say I come to church on Sunday to sin. 
because I, I, get, I get all those sweets and treats that I don't eat during the week when I focus on health food, so and enjoy the day. Our parting words, as the Hanukkah candles continue to flame, please join in reciting the words in your order of service. We do not extinguish Hanukkah candles. They burn out themselves. So we cherish this flame and the light of truth, the warmth of community, and the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Go now in peace and join us for coffee, cake, ice cream, conversation, and holiday hugs. Beautiful, beautiful, you did so well. You had a very pleasant manner of presenting all of these problems. <laughs> yeah.